if you're an intelligent person, and I know you are because you're watching this, well, that intelligence probably comes from your parents, either genes or education. But when it comes to security intelligence, well, that's a completely different story. And it takes some real effort before you can brag about it. So what is security intelligence? It's an entire process where information that comes from, well, pretty much everything that can generate information in your company is uh, collected, is analyzed, and then we draw some conclusions based on it. Well, if those conclusions refer in any way to how secure is our organization or our systems, then that is security intelligence. And as you can probably guess, if this intelligence is about computer systems or electronic data, we're going to call it cybersecurity intelligence. Now, CTI, keyword threat, is about that information or intelligence of the world outside this time. How bad is the neighborhood that we live in? How bad is the internet? Uh, what attacks are currently happening in the world? Are there companies similar to ours that are being targeted? Zero-day exploits, uh, active hacker groups, zero-day exploits, active hacker groups, uh, anything bad that is currently happening out there. So security intelligence and cyber threat intelligence together help you know exactly who is out there to get you, how are they doing it, and what you need to do about it. Now, that sounds like intelligence, right? But how exactly do you get this information? Where should we look for this intelligence? Well, first you can just read about them what types of attacks are out there or have been detected in the past, uh, what attack methods or vulnerability types are more common. This is a very useful information when you need to buy some security equipment and you have to decide on a vendor and a specific feature set, and also when you need to reconfigure some stuff in your network. For example, when you're extending your network or your company, how do you secure that new branch? Or when you add a new application in your company? Now, I don't need to tell you that this requires a lot of manual effort and expensive people if you want a job well done. So an alternative to the manual effort is the data feed or the threat feed. That is an online source of data designed to be queried automatically by applications, security and networking devices. The data feed provides a continuous flow of information about specific things to look out for, like back domains or uh, URLs that host malware, IP addresses with bad reputation, uh, attack signatures, spam sources, uh, even your antivirus database and the updates that it receives can be considered a threat feed. The purpose is to minimize manual intervention. Data feed updates can be automated and ideally they would also be always up to date. And sometimes they can even provide real-time information about attacks or threats that are currently happening right now in the world. Of course, if you want it to be automated, reliable and cheap, I can only choose two. So a good threat feed will cost you some money for the subscription. Another very important source of information is looking into the historical or trend information. We'll get back to this later, but just to keep things short, where do you think is the largest amount of information located? Well, obviously, if it's already out there, then it must have been generated sometime in the past. So it should be in your logs, in your alerts, in your historical trends that you've generated over time. That is where you can look and where you can start seeing patterns. Uh, like in the Matrix. I hope you're not studying IT or cybersecurity without having seen the movie Matrix. <laughs> so patterns is where you can learn from mistakes and know when something goes off pattern and it might signal a threat, even before you know what the threat is. And of course, it depends on how you look at this information. One might be some mundane information like an employee logging in twice in uh, 10 minutes, but correlated with some other factors like the first connection came from the US and the second one came from China, it might indicate some problems. So we are talking about computer threats, cybersecurity threats, and later on we'll see how to mitigate them or avoid them completely. But until we reach that point, let's start with the basics. Say you want to defend yourself against potential attackers. Where do you start? 
A good starting point are those intelligence sources that we've mentioned, which are also a source for reconnaissance. And a reconnaissance basically means finding out more stuff about your target that you can leverage when you're about to attack that target. But we're the good guys, right? We don't usually attack, but we need to know the mindset of the attacker in order to properly defend ourselves. And this starts with the question, what could a potential attacker find out about us? Well, the first category is open source intelligence or OSINT. That's data available in public sources, uh, which are just as easily accessible for you as they are for the hackers. Uh, these sources give a lot of information without actually being involved or interacting with a company or a person. So it's information that you can find in the media, on the internet, in uh, public government data, including financials or online publications. Your website is another very important source of information. For example, if you're listing all your staff members in there. LinkedIn can also provide a lot of information about your company and be very careful with job descriptions that you're posting. You might be giving up valuable information about your IT systems. If you're looking for a firewall engineer or of a specific brand or model, there you go. Everybody knows that you own those firewalls now. In general, be aware that you're probably giving out more information than you think to the outside world. Go ahead, search your name or a work colleague or the company you work for on Google and uh, well, see what you can find. By the way, open source means overt or publicly accessible. It's not related to open source software in any way. Of course, dedicated tools for reconnaissance can make your life just a bit easier by automating your reconnaissance efforts, like correlating information from multiple search engines. We'll have a look over some of these tools in a moment. And you also have open source feeds. Well, they give you access to reputation databases and malware signatures uh, without any subscription. Government agencies are one such open source. For example, in the US, you have the NCAS, <laughs> no, not NCIS, which is the National Cyber Awareness System. The Alien Vault guys are nice enough to provide some free threat intelligence as well. The MISP project is another standardized collection of open source feeds. And you might not think about it, and you probably know about VirusTotal, that it can be used to analyze malware files, but it can also provide some insight into the reputation of specific URLs. And don't forget about blogs or convention websites. A lot of smart people are constantly contributing to the security blogs and publications. At least have a look over this list of top 50 security blogs and try to figure out which one of these apply to you and to your company. Finally, closed source intelligence is collected and organized by security vendors. They're usually subscription based, which means that you'll have to make some payments from time to time, but they should be better maintained than the open source ones. Just be careful, some smaller vendors out there just repackage open source content and uh, ask you money for those. Some examples here would be uh, IBM's Force Exchange from, surprise, IBM. <laughs> FireEye, another very well-known security vendor. Fortinet is another very popular security vendor and they have their own subscription service called FortiGuard. And of course, we should mention Cisco with their Talos cloud service, which not only provides you with security intelligence, but also learns from current Cisco customers. And um, Given just how widespread Cisco is within the enterprise environment, uh, Talos has become a very powerful tool. Before digging into more advanced tools, don't forget about the most basic tools either. Like Whois. This is a free public database about who is <laughs> responsible for pretty much every internet resource. Uh, websites, IP addresses. Also, this database can be accessed on a number of websites. Uh, Google a couple of them, just pick one and go. DNS can also be queried for a lot of interesting information, especially when looking for alternate domains, subdomains, uh, mail servers, web servers, and sometimes you can even find out some information about internal servers of some company if the DNS server is not configured properly. 
On Linux and macOS, you can also use mostly out of the box tools like dig and host. Or you can use a web service instead, like the uh, dig utility from Google Toolbox. Finally, zone transfers can sometimes be attempted on badly configured DNS servers. Normally, a zone transfer is an internal operation used by admins to replicate a DNS database between multiple servers, but sometimes it just happens, mostly because somebody was not careful, that this functionality is exposed to the internet as well. When this happens, you can simply request the entire DNS information on the server and uh, it will be handed to your client, no questions asked. The number of tools at your disposal for gathering open source intelligence is huge. I'm mentioning just a few of them here that might help you on the exam, but for the exam purposes, you really only need to recognize them and be aware of how they work in general. FOCA, or uh, fingerprinting organizations with collected archive. If it sounds weird, it might be because it seems to be translated from Spanish. Anyway, it's a tool for scanning document metadata, so anything that can be extracted from office files, uh, PDF files, EXIF information and images. Uh, it uses a couple of search engines to find out more information about that extracted data. The Harvester sounds like a wrestler's name. Uh, determines a company's external threat landscape on the internet, so it answers the question, how exposed are we? Searches for names, email, subdomains, valid IP addresses and URLs using multiple public sources on the internet. By the way, this is not illegal, everything is just public information, you're not hacking anything or anyone. Shodan it's a search engine for anything connecting to the internet, widely used to identify unsecured servers, IoT devices, home routers and webcams. Maltigo uses open source intelligence information and can determine relationships between companies, even between people. Recon NG, it's a Python tool that performs web reconnaissance and can also be used in pen testing scenarios sometimes. Census, it's another device search engine, searches among any devices connected to the internet and provides you with as much information as can be gathered from the outside. Website rippers are another category, they simply clone an entire website's files on your machine. Of course, you will not be able to copy the, uh, perhaps the PHP or the ASP scripts in the backend, and neither you will be able to copy the database, but web page code might reveal some forgotten information, might expose some vulnerabilities, uh, might include some email addresses in there, not to mention that you could find out that you have access to specific website regions that are normally hidden from normal user navigation. A very special mention has to be made for Google. Google in itself indexes a large portion of the public internet, which means that there is a lot of useful information in its index, you just have to be able to look for it. Uh, some examples here, you can use quotes to search for specific phrases, you can add a minus sign in front of a word or a quoted phrase to exclude it from results, you can return pages that include both search terms, because by default Google assumes an OR operator between all your search words, you can search for specific file types, titles or URL components. Most of them can be accessed from the advanced search page on Google as well. Google Hacking Database includes some very smart examples that extensively use these operators. Finally, the last step in your intelligence gathering quest will be answering the question, is this source trustworthy? And is this specific piece of information true? Also, I might tell you that I trust this source and I believe this information. Is this enough for you to trust the same source and believe the same information? So the criteria that we should be looking for would be timeliness. Information should not be old. That's especially important in cybersecurity because simply discovering a threat, talking about it, showing up in the media, this tells the attacker that their attack has become public knowledge, so that makes the threat evolve. So is the Intel source up to date or not? Relevancy. Does it apply to you? 
You might have an intel source about a specific threat that attacks systems or protocols or processes that are completely absent in your environment. It has to be relevant to you. Accuracy. Is the source so specific that it'll allow you to immediately build some sort of defense and control against it? Or is it just something uh, generic, some threat out there to think about that we don't really know how it looks, how it behaves, and we have just a general idea about how to protect ourselves against it? And of course, now more than ever, be aware of fake news and fake information. Sometimes a clickbait is just that. Nowadays everybody has a voice on the internet, so it's up to you which ones you listen to. And since all this sounds terribly subjective to interpretation, well, for the exam we need to know something called the Admiralty System, or the NATO system, which is a method for evaluating the reliability of a source and the credibility of the information. Now, of course, government organizations would be more in touch with this rather than the private sector, but unfortunately also is your dear exam. Now, for the exam, make sure you understand the different intelligence sources that we've discussed about, and you can provide some examples of them, and you can also recognize some of those threat information sources. Remember that even simple tools like Google or LinkedIn or utilities like Ping, Whois, or simple DNS lookups can provide with you a lot of valuable information about a person or a company. And keep in mind that you need to always be on top of this information, because hackers have access to it too. Thank you for your time, don't forget to subscribe to Certify Breakfast, good luck and see you on the next video.